Depth review of the Tamron A17 Nei AF 7300mm F forward slash 4 5.6 DILD macro 1 2 for Nikon motor. Introduction. Back on April 30th, 2013, I decided to expand my photography toolkit with the Tamron A17 Nei AF 7300mm F forward slash 4 5.6 DILD macro 1 2 lens for my Nikon camera. It was an investment of PS131.08, a budget-friendly choice that seemed promising for someone eager to explore the world of macro and telephoto photography. However, my experience with this lens was short-lived, as it broke within a short time. Despite the setback, the journey with this lens taught me valuable lessons, especially when transitioning to the Nikon AFSDX Nikkor 55 300mm f forward slash 4.5-5.6 GVR lens shortly after. Unboxing and first impressions. I vividly remember the excitement of unboxing the Tamron A17 Nii. The lens arrived well packaged, complete with a lens hood and both front and rear caps. Holding it for the first time, the lens felt lightweight, a feature that was both a blessing and a curse. The build quality didn't scream luxury, but it was decent for the price. The zoom ring had a slight resistance, and the macro switch was an interesting addition, albeit a bit fiddly. Build quality and design. The Tamron A17 Nii is constructed primarily from plastic, which keeps the weight down but also means it doesn't have the solid, durable feel of higher-end lenses. The metal mount is a nice touch, adding a bit of reassurance about the lens's longevity. However, one notable downside is the lens's tendency to extend significantly when zoomed to 300mm, which can make it feel unbalanced, especially on smaller camera bodies. Handling and ergonomics in terms of handling, the lens is user-friendly, but not without its quirks. The zoom ring, while smooth, is a bit stiff, which can make quick adjustments tricky. The macro switch is a novel feature, allowing for 1-2 macro photography at the 180-300mm range. However, engaging and disengaging the macro mode can be cumbersome, often requiring the lens to be set at specific focal lengths. This made quick transitions between normal and macro shooting somewhat frustrating. Performance P. Image quality. The image quality of the Tamron A17 Mii is a mixed bag. From 7200mm, the lens delivers respectable sharpness, especially when stopped down to f8. However, at 300mm, the lens suffers from noticeable softness, a common issue in budget telephoto zooms. The chromatic aberration is well controlled up to 180mm, but it becomes more pronounced at longer focal lengths, particularly in high contrast situations autofocus and shooting speed. The autofocus performance is where the Tamron A17 Nii shows its limitations. The focus speed is sluggish, especially in low light conditions or at the longer end of the zoom range. The lens tends to hunt for focus, which can be frustrating when trying to capture fast moving subjects. For macro photography, manual focus is almost a necessity as the autofocus struggles to lock onto closed subjects accurately. Macro capabilities. The 1-2 macro capability is one of the lens's standout features, offering a unique opportunity to capture close-up shots without needing a dedicated macro lens. However, the macro function is only available between 180mm and 300mm, which is where the lens is at its softest. While this feature is useful for photographing subjects like flowers or insects, the image quality may not satisfy those looking for crisp, detailed macro shots. My personal experience. My experience with the Tamron A17 Nii was unfortunately brief. The lens broke down within a month of use, leaving me with the decision of whether to attempt a repair or to move on to another lens. Given the challenges of dealing with overseas returns and repairs in 2013, I chose to take the loss and invest in a Nikon AF SDX Nikkor 55 300mm lens instead. This decision was partly influenced by the frustration of the Tamron's autofocus issues and the desire for a more reliable lens for my photography needs. The transition to the Nikon 55 300mm was a significant upgrade. The Nikon lens offered better build quality, faster autofocus and superior image sharpness, especially at longer focal lengths. Despite the higher cost, the Nikon lens proved to be a more worthwhile investment in the long run, enhancing my photography experience significantly detailed breakdown of the performance. 
build quality and handling. For an inexpensive lens, the Tamron 7300mm f forward slash 4 5.6 felt surprisingly solid and operated quite smoothly. As noted above, we'd actually like just a little more resistance in the focus ring, but the zoom ring worked very smoothly, and with just the right amount of resistance, it was stiffer than many zooms in this respect. But the upside is that it showed virtually no tendency towards zoom creep when the camera was held with the lens pointing straight up or down. Overall, the Tamron 7300mm f forward slash 4 5.6 felt better than we'd normally expect from a lens with such a low street price, a pleasant surprise in the handling department image quality in depth analysis. Sharpness. One, sharpness is a crucial aspect when evaluating any lens, especially for those who intend to use it for telephoto or macro photography. The Tamron A17 Nii AF 7300mm f forward slash 4-5.6 DILD macro 1-2 lens delivers mixed results in this regard. At the wider end of the focal range 7200mm, the lens can produce relatively sharp images especially when stopped down to f8 or f11. However, as you approach the 300mm mark, the sharpness noticeably deteriorates. When shooting at 300mm, even stopping down to f11 doesn't completely alleviate the softness, though it does help improve the overall clarity somewhat. This softness can be particularly problematic for photographers looking to capture detailed wildlife shots or distant subjects where the lens's maximum reach would ideally come in handy. For macro photography, where sharpness is paramount, the lens's softness at 300mm is a significant drawback. The 1-2 magnification ratio is appealing on paper, but in practice the results can be underwhelming due to the lack of fine detail at close focusing distances. Chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is another area where the Tamron A17 Nii shows its budget nature. At focal lengths below 180mm, chromatic aberration is relatively well controlled, with only minor fringing visible in high contrast areas. However, as you zoom closer to 300 millimeters, the lens begins to struggle. The fringing becomes more noticeable, particularly in the corners of the frame, where it can be quite pronounced. In practical terms, this means that images shot at 300 millimeters in bright sunlight or against high contrast backgrounds, such as a bird against a bright sky, will likely exhibit visible color fringing. While this can often be corrected in post-processing, it's an extra step that more expensive lenses manage to avoid, or at least minimize. Shading vignetting. Shading or vignetting refers to the darkening of the image corners relative to the center. On full frame cameras, this is often more pronounced, but even on APS CC sensors, vignetting can be noticeable. The Tamron A17 Nii exhibits some degree of vignetting, particularly when used wide open at f4 and f forward slash 5.6. At 70 millimeters, the vignetting is minimal and becomes less of an issue as you stop down to f8 or smaller apertures. However, at the 300mm end, there is noticeable darkening in the corners, especially when shooting at maximum aperture. This vignetting can be reduced by stopping down, but it never completely disappears. For many photographers, vignetting is not a deal breaker, and in some cases it can even add a desirable effect to the image. However, for those who prefer uniform exposure across the frame, especially in landscape or architectural photography, the vignetting on this lens might require correction in post-processing. Distortion. Ick. Distortion in the Tamron A17 Nii is relatively well controlled for a lens in this price range. At 70mm there is slight barrel distortion which causes straight lines to bow outward. As you zoom in towards 300mm the distortion shifts to a mild pincushion effect where lines bow inward. In real world shooting these distortions are usually not noticeable unless you are photographing subjects with straight lines near the edges of the frame such as buildings or horizon lines. Wines. For most photography, including portraits and nature shots, the distortion is unlikely to be a significant issue. However, for architectural photographers or those requiring precise line rendering, the distortion may need correction in post-processing. Autofocus performance. Autofocus is a critical aspect of any lens, particularly for those interested in wildlife, sports, or any fast-paced photography. The Tamron A17 Nii AF 7300mm f forward slash 4-5.6 DILD macro 1-2 lens uses a standard electric motor for focusing, which is both a blessing and a curse. Speed and accuracy. The autofocus speed of the Tamron A17 Nii is noticeably slow, especially compared to lenses equipped with more advanced focusing motors like Nikon's Silent Wave Motor SWM or Canon's Ultrasonic Motor USM.
This sluggishness is particularly evident in low light conditions or when attempting to focus on fast moving subjects. The lens tends to hunt for focus, which can be frustrating if you're trying to capture a fleeting moment. However, when the lens does lock onto a subject, the focus is generally accurate. For stationary subjects or those moving at a predictable pace, the autofocus can be reliable, albeit slow. The focus motor is also quite noisy, which could be a concern in quiet environments or when photographing timid wildlife. Manual focus and macro mode. Given the limitations of the autofocus, many users may find themselves frequently switching to manual focus, especially when working in macro mode. The manual focus ring is adequately sized and provides a decent amount of resistance, allowing for precise adjustments. However, as mentioned earlier, the focus ring moves so easily that it's easy to jostle it out of position, which can be frustrating during critical focusing tasks. In macro mode, the manual focus becomes almost essential. The autofocus struggles significantly when attempting to lock onto small, close-up subjects, often hunting back and forth without success. By switching to manual focus, you can achieve the precise control needed for macro photography, although the softness at 300 mm remains a limitation. Macro capabilities. One of the key selling points of the Tamron 17 EIE is its macro functionality. The ability to switch into a 1-2 macro mode between 180mm and 300mm is an attractive feature for photographers interested in close-up photography without investing in a dedicated macro lens, magnification and working distance. In macro mode, the lens offers a maximum magnification of 0.5x, which is sufficient for capturing detailed shots of small subjects like flowers, insects or small objects. The minimum focusing distance in macro mode is 0.95m providing a comfortable working distance for photographing subjects without casting shadows or disturbing them. Image quality in macro mode. Unfortunately, the image quality in macro mode is compromised by the lens's inherent softness at 300 millimeters. While the 1-2 magnification is impressive, the resulting images often lack the sharpness and clarity expected from macro photography. Chromatic aberration and fringing can also become more pronounced, particularly in high contrast areas of the frame. For casual macro photography, the lens is serviceable, especially if you are photographing subjects with less intricate details. However, for serious macro work, where every detail counts, the limitations of this lens become apparent. Handling and build quality a closer look. For an inexpensive lens, the Tamron A17 Nia F7300 mm f forward slash 4 5.6 DILD macro 1 2 feels surprisingly well built. The lens is constructed from a combination of plastic and metal with a metal mount providing a secure attachment to the camera body. While it lacks the heft and premium feel of more expensive lenses, the build quality is respectable for its price range. Weight and balance. The lens weighs in at approximately 458 grams, 16.2 ounces, making it relatively lightweight for a telephoto zoom lens. This makes it an appealing option for photographers who need a versatile zoom lens for travel or field work without adding significant weight to their camera bag. However, the lightweight construction also means that the lens can feel a bit unbalanced, particularly when extended to 300 mm Zoom and focus rings. The zoom ring on the Tamron A17 Nii operates smoothly, with just the right amount of resistance to prevent accidental zoom changes while shooting. The focus ring, however, is less refined. While it provides adequate control for manual focusing, it has a tendency to rotate too freely, making it easy to jostle out of position. This can be particularly frustrating when attempting to fine tune focus in macro mode. Macro switch mechanism. The macro switch mechanism on this lens is both a strength and a weakness. On the positive side, it allows for quick access to macro mode without needing to attach a dedicated macro lens. However, the switch is somewhat cumbersome to operate, requiring the lens to be set to a specific focal length range 180mm, 300mm before it can be engaged. This can slow down the shooting process, particularly if you need to switch quickly between normal and macro shooting modes. Lens hood and accessories. The lens comes with a standard barrel shaped lens hood, which is useful for reducing lens flare and protecting the front element from accidental bumps. The hood attaches securely and does its job well though it can be a bit tricky to reverse for storage. Overall, while the build quality and handling of the Tamron A17 Nia-F7300 mm f forward slash 4 5.6 DILD Macro 1-2 are not without their quirks, they are more than acceptable for a lens in this price range. The lens feels solid in hand and is capable of delivering satisfactory results, 
provided its limitations are understood and accounted for in the shooting process. Conclusion. Cam. The Tamron, a 17 Mi AF 7300mm f forward slash 4 5.6 DLD macro 1 2 is a lens that offers an affordable entry into the world of telephoto and macro photography, while it has its strengths, such as the 1 2 macro capability and reasonable image quality up to 200mm. It is ultimately let down by its softness at 300mm, slow autofocus, and the cumbersome macro switching mechanism. For those on a tight budget, it might serve as a decent starter lens, but for anyone serious about photography, investing in a more robust lens like the Nikon 55 300mm is a better option. Reflecting on my brief time with the Tamron lens, I realized that while it was not the right fit for my needs, it played a role in pushing me towards better gear and improving my photography skills. Every experience, even the less than ideal ones, contributes to growth in the art of photography. Call to action. If you found this review helpful or have any questions about the Tamron, a 17 Mi EAF 7300mm f forward slash 4 5.6 DILD macro 1 2 or other photography gear, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm always happy to share more insights or help you choose the right equipment for your needs. Don't forget to check out my other lens reviews and photography tips on this blog. Disclaimer, this review is based on my personal experience with the Tamron a 17 Mi IA 7300mm f forward slash 4 4 5.6 DILD macro 1 2 lens, and the opinions expressed here are my own. The prices mentioned are accurate as of the time of writing and may vary depending on the region and retailer.